Welcome back to another episode of Rob Sports Center. As you can see by the title, man, this video really needs no explanation. This video really needs no introduction. If you clicked on this video, you clicked on this video for a very specific reason. So my job is to make sure that I get the information out there to you for, re for which you clicked on this video. So as you guys can see, the title of this video is Michael Jordan, I probably end up titling this video, Michael Jordan is the GOAT, it's not even close, right? So I've been doing extensive research, as you guys may know, um, I've, more, I've um, here recently, you know, have been educating myself on the legends of the past in the game, right? So that way I can, or that way I can be able to speak cleanly whenever I'm having debates about if who's better out of this player, which, what era was the most difficult, I can speak to it because I have information on the new era, obviously, because that's what I'm born into also, but I got information on old because I went back and I educated myself. So I've come to realization that I believe that the GOAT debate at this point really is undebatable, and I'm gonna tell you why. So I've been doing a lot of research on Michael Jordan. Shout out to the Last Dance documentary. They kind of put him in my in my in the limelight for me to kind of okay, this guy right here was different. Let me go seek out some information of my own. And I did several reaction videos on my channel. I got a Michael Jordan playlist if you want to see my reaction to a lot of those videos. And I've come up with the realization, like I said, that the GOAT debate isn't even close. So I wrote here on a piece of paper the things that stands out to me about Mike. Um, and 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 what I and the reasons why I say that it's undebatable. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get straight into reading you my 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 reasons why I believe that it's not even close, right? So first off, when we talk about when we having to go debate, obviously LeBron comes up, and then you might even put Kobe in there. And the thing that I be trying to get people to understand, that I think a lot of people don't look at, is the fact that Kobe. And Mike, I mean, Kobe and LeBron came straight out of high school. You know, Mike played three years in college. He was coming back for his, for his senior year, as you've seen on Last Dance documentary, until his head coach told him, I think you should go pro. And then he went pro, but he was planning, he was planning on coming back for his senior season. So those are three years of potential NBA time that he didn't have because of, you know, how things were back then. So LeBron and them already had a head start on him, right? Then you got to think. Mike only played 15 seasons in the NBA. LeBron is on his 20 of something season. Kobe played like 20 seasons. So you got to think. Obviously, the longer you play, the greater chance you have at shattering records. That's just it, it. It almost comes with just playing. If I play from age 19 in the NBA up until I'm 45, then obviously I would assume that you would hold that I would hold a whole bunch of records, right? So. This is, so that that that's one aspect of it, right? So I said it to say this. What I'm about to read to you is things that Mike got accomplished in 15 seasons. And keep in mind, this man retired and came back. I'm gonna rewind that. This man retired and came back. So that right there technically is another year, those four potential years he had towards the NBA that Kobe and them had that he didn't have, right? So in his 15 year career, Michael Jordan won six NBA championships. He won one in 91, 92, 93, retired, came back, won one in 96, 97, and 98, right? He won three, retired, and came back, and won three more. How impressive is that? You know what I mean? And then I wish, I, I should have, I should have put um, in terms of like his, how many games he played. I'm just, you know, and what I mean by that, I'm talking about in terms of did how many games did he play? Did he didn't play due to injury? How many games did he didn't play due to sickness? How many games did he didn't play due to load management? Because that wasn't even a thing back then. But that's the thing that they got now, you know. But that's that's for a whole other topic, right? <laughs> that's for a whole other topic. So he won. Um, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He won. What is that? Nine All NBA first teams. He won one in 88, 89, 90, 91, 93, well, 92, 93, 96, 97, 98. He won all NBA defensive first team, 1988, 1989, 1990, 1991, 1992, 1993, 1996, 1997, 1998. He won defensive player of the year in 1988. Now, this is what messed me up when I found this out. And I might be wrong. And I, I, don't, I don't proclaim to know Everything it's gonna be some stuff that I don't know, and I might be wrong, right? But last time I checked, I, I don't remember a player ever winning MVP, league MVP, and defensive player of the year at the same time. I don't recall it. Like that's that that 
when I when I heard when I heard that, that right there messed me up. So in 1988, in the 1988 season, Jordan won league MVP on top of defensive player of the year. So that shows you that he's not a one-dimensional player. He's not just a scorer because has James has James Harden won defensive um, defensive player of the year? Has Luka Doncic won a defensive player of the year? Have all these Kevin Durant, all these these elite scores that we talk about in today's in today's league that's one way players have they won anything in terms of like defensive player or anything like that? Absolutely not, you know, because they didn't take pride in their defense. All they want to do is score the ball, right? Um, so after that, you got Lee. How many MVPs he got? League MVPs. One, two, three, four, five. He got five league MVPs. He won one in '88, '91, '92, '96, '98. Yeah, that was on um, NBA MVP. So I think I put the same thing down. I know, and then I know um, he won six. He won six finals, right? He went to the finals six times, won all six of them. And in all six of those finals, he was the um, the finals MVP. And that's not to knock none of the legends like LeBron and Kobe who didn't win it all the times that they went to the finals. It's not to knock them at all. But I mean, that just that's just worth that's just worth mentioning if you ask me. That's just worth mention. Um, worth mentioning. He was an NBA Slam Dunk champion in 87 and 88. He won Rookie of the Year in 85. He won an Olympic gold medal in 84 and 1992. He was an NCAA champion in 1982. He holds 10 scoring titles, most in NBA history. And like I said, once again, this man never lost a final series. He's 6-0 in the finals. Never went to a Game 7 in the finals. Never went past Game 6 in the finals, man. Like I say, one of the most impressive things to me too, man, is just the fact that this man retired and decided, okay, I want to go try this out and came back. It was something that a lot of people don't do their education on. Michael Jordan wasn't a bad baseball player. Now, based off what we've seen from him on the court, we expected that to transition directly to bat in baseball, and that's just not the way that happens. He played baseball. I think the last time Mike might have played baseball was in high school. You got to think high school that man hasn't been training from that for, for baseball you know what i mean he wanted to challenge himself because the nba was getting a little too easy but then also the stuff that was going on in terms of the media but the nba was was was, was too easy to him so he retired he leaves comes back and win three more finals you know what i mean and it's like me and me and, me and one of my, my co-workers we always have a debate he's a jordan guy too right and we talk about look at how you hear the legends speak of Michael Jordan. Look at how you hear these guys make basically say that when Jordan was playing, we really didn't have no chance of winning. Like simple and plain. When Jordan left for a year, when he retired, okay, now we got to win. Now everybody have a shot. Now it's an even playing field. But when Jordan was here, when Jordan was in the league, everybody felt like, you know, we know who's going to win a championship. I mean, we can't really do nothing with this guy. And, that's, and, I, and I don't hear that today's players on potential Hall of Famer speaking on any of the guys like that in today's league because these guys are very beatable. We've seen them be beat on every, and on several occasions. You know what I mean? Michael Jordan was more of a mythical situation because, like, we haven't seen him lose in the finals. You know what I mean? We don't know what that looks like to see him lose. We, see, we know how, what it looks like to see him lose in the regular season and in the playoffs, but not the finals. You know what I mean? But that was just something. That's a video I have been wanting to put out. Um, and just that alone, man, reading that in 15 seasons, it's hard to, you know, debate and say that he's not. I mean, that the, the, the numbers speak for itself. And it might even be some accomplishments that I didn't, that I forgot to leave, that I forgot to put in. You know what I mean? It might be so. Then keep in mind, I know this, you know, this ain't necessarily as important as everything I just read. But in the process of that 15-year career, this man, and I think that was on... Um, it might have been, was that after he came back when he filmed Space Jam? So in the process of filming Face, Space Jam, he had them build a court and he was running pickup games to get himself back in game shape, but then also to study his opponents, to kind of look at them and say, okay, cool. So it's like everything this guy done in terms of basketball was tactical. It was never just to be doing it. 
It was for a reason. Whether it's for him to get it up on his competition or it's for him to get himself in better shape and better prepared for the season. You know what I mean? But at the end of this video, I think I'm gonna end up putting some clips in and that's just gonna show some of the legends speaking highly of Mike in 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 um in how they do and just see why I say that I don't even think that the GOAT debate is close. But as you guys can see, man, that's it for this video, man. If you did enjoy this video, do me a big, 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 big favor, man. Smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you've been watching my, my videos, if, you be, if you're a regular visitor on my channel and you haven't subscribed and you're watching my videos, man, go ahead and subscribe, man. Go ahead and do yourself a favor. You know, because like I always see in every outro, just like the GOAT Drizzy Drake say, I'm coming back to back with these videos, man. I'll see y'all in the next video.